we got another solid recession signal, once again related to struggling U.S. consumers, something that usually only happens when we're already in recession. Revolving credit in April declined for the first time in three years, which was right around the time the economy stumbled and triggered this rash of corporate warnings telling us about problems with the consumer economy. Falling credit card use is typically a combination of some consumers becoming more cautious, borrowing less and paying down outstanding balances, while others, they want to borrow, but they can't because banks and other financial companies don't want to lend. You put those two together, and these are developments we see during business cycle troughs or recession. This is the reason they're called cycles, because we find these kinds of traits and patterns during each of them, and it's just plain common sense. When jobs are hard to get, and you get worried you might lose yours, it changes your behavior. On the other side of it, when prices go up, especially for necessities like gas, but you've tapped out on your credit already, once the bank says no more, you've also got to change your behavior. And while everyone went crazy over Friday's headline payroll number for May, we keep getting more and more confirmation, the unemployment rate and the household survey, those more accurately represent the real labor market, therefore the economy. Solid cyclical signals. Say that five times fast. Now, revolving credit, we can use non-revolving credit too, but the federal government has been forgiving student loans, so that kind of spoils the signal. Besides, there's a really good set of cyclical correlations with just revolving credit, credit cards, and that makes perfect sense. So the latest data we got from the Federal Reserve for the month of April showed a small decline in the seasonally adjusted balance of revolving consumer credit. It had slowed down last year. It got weak in September and October, just to, right along with basically everything else in the, in the U.S. economy. It had a big jump in November, but then back down in December. A rebound in January, February, which sounds just like everything else that we've been talking about. But then March, there was a stumble in revolving credit in March, down to a gain of $1.6 billion, which was revised a little bit higher. It was had, The original estimate had been a little bit weaker. And now the latest figure for, the, for April 2024, minus $462 million, suggesting that consumer credit has been slowing down, and it is not because of rate hikes, as we'll see in just a moment here. Instead, this is a solid, as I said, cyclical signal, because consumers are changing the way they behave. And we've mentioned before, Delinquencies are rising, as are the number of Americans who are tapped out. They've maxed out on their credit cards because this weak economy, price pressures and everything else, they can only go so far. So eventually banks hit a wall, consumers hit a wall, prudent consumers start paying back some of their loans, and we start to see this kind of behavior in terms of revolving credit balances. If we go back to the previous business cycle, 2008, again, it's basically the same picture. You had revolving credit that was accelerating as the housing bubble burst and the economy weakened, even though, even though the Federal Reserve had just finished up its rate hiking program. From 2004 to the middle of 2006, Alan Greenspan, then Ben Bernanke's Fed, raised the federal funds rate 17 times quarter point increments each time. And yet, despite getting all the way to five and a quarter percent, sound familiar? Revolving credit actually accelerated in the latter half of 2006 into 2007 as the economy weakened, as gasoline prices started to accelerate. Most of the growth came in, in revolving credit came well after the Fed was finished. But you get to November 2007, and suddenly cons revolving consumer credit begins to roll over. There was a significant deceleration in early 2008, but then it was basically steady from March 2008 throughout the summer. You saw, like today, some moderate declines in revolving consumer credit in the summer 2008, while the recession was already begun, before the big plunge later on, the transition from the first stage of the recession into the second stage. But while this was happening, while consumer credit was becoming weaker, consumer spending was also becoming weaker because all of these are a reflection of the same cyclical processes that we see in every business cycle. So much so that even Federal Reserve policymakers had picked up on that softening, that weakness, that change in revolving credit. If we go to the September 2008 FOMC meeting, they were talking about a whole bunch of things, including how the economy seemed to be relatively resilient, even as the financial system was just plunged off a cliff. When in fact, 
the U.S. economy wasn't actually resilient. It just kind of appeared resilient when you looked at it from certain angles. And some of the Fed policymakers said, if we look at it at, from other angles, it doesn't look so great after all. And one of those other angles was, again, this consistent cyclical signal in the form of revolving consumer credit. So a fellow by the name of Randy Krosner, who was a governor, board of, part of the Board of Governors of Federal Reserve, said, this is September 2008, Although many of these shocks were similar to ones that happened earlier in the decade, and talking about the various economic developments that happened that seem to have interrupted consumer spending but never actually did, it seems that consumers do not have the same resilience now that they did at one point. It's not surprising that after having this marathon, they're going to be a bit tired. Part of it could be the credit conditions that are putting much more pressure on them. Just to give you an anecdotal report, but it's from one of the largest providers of consumer credit in the economy, after stabilization basically through the, our FOMC meeting in August, we've seen some significant deterioration in delinquencies and in the performance of those who get into delinquencies. They roll right to full charge off much more rapidly. So we have seen not exactly a qualitative change, but a significant deterioration. And what did the FRBNY household credit report report last month? that the transition of delinquencies has accelerated in a way we haven't seen in over a decade. In fact, it's really like the early part of 2008, at least according to the numbers, where they relate to consumer credit. Same thing with auto loans too, but to a, um, a lesser degree. But essentially, it's the same cyclical process. You have bad, bad economic environment, softening jobs market, price pressures, all of the negative ingredients that you would, you would factor and associate with a downturn in the business cycle. So in 2008, while many were sanguine about the economy, despite all of it, all the developments in the financial system, really the monetary system, because it was not a financial crisis, some policymakers were cautioning, we can see the cracks forming in the consumer economy. And consumer credit, revolving credit in particular, was one of those major cracks. And as consumers transition into delinquencies, I'm gonna clumsily transition into letting you know about Eurodollar University's upcoming anniversary sale, as well as a webinar that we're holding in conjunction with the anniversary sale. The webinar will be held on Friday, June 28th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to talk about the fundamentals of interest rates and what those are going to look like over the next 12 months. Because we've got central banks pivoting, we've got macro factors, and what we're thinking as far as the monetary plumbing. All the usual stuff I write about every day in Eurodollar University's deep dive analysis, we're gonna put a little bit of that in our upcoming webinar. Now you can sign up for it right now, there's a link in the description, and I'll let you know more about EDU's anniversary sale as we get closer to it. I hope to see you there, again, Friday, June 28th, 6.30 p.m. But it was, let's get back to the cycle and consumer credit and how it plays into the cycle. Not just 2008. In 2008, you could say, well, that was an extreme example. Of course, of course, there was a massive pressure on consumers because we had this whole not financial crisis to worry about. On top of that, you had gasoline prices and consumer prices and everything. I mean, it was just a big, a big, huge mess. Well, we go back another cycle before that in 2000, 2001, we see the same pattern of behavior. Well, look at revolving consumer credit. You've got substantial increases in the summer of 2000, right up until February 2001, which is the last month before the recession began. And interestingly enough, same thing as before, rate hikes. Greenspan's Fed had been hiking rates up until the middle of 2000, and yet consumer, revolving consumer credit continued to accelerate because the economy got worse. People were seeing the dot-com bust and thinking this might, have a, this might end up being a big problem in the real economy. As the, as the labor market softened and as prices in, increased, as we'll see in just a moment, using credit cards to offset some of those things until they could not go any further. So you see substantial increases in revolving credit right up until February 2001. You got a few, you don't really see negative months until July of 2001. And then the six month average turns negative in October 2001. So as I said in the introduction, by the time you get to negative consumer or revolving consumer credit months, the recession's already begun. So if you start stringing together these negative months and revolving credit, that suggests most of all a big shift in the labor market. Let's go to March of 2001, again, the FOMC meeting, and policymakers, like their, like their counterparts later on in 2008, some of them in 2001 were thinking, we might actually go into recession. Just like in 2008, 
the conventional opinion was that the, in 2001, the dot-com bust, that would be a problem for the New York Stock Exchange and for stock investors. And while they were concerned about the potential macroeconomic fallout from it, policymakers were on the whole thinking soft landing, everything would be just fine, except when you looked at consumer credit and revolving credit, there were a number of warning signs. And a fellow by the name of Jack Ginn, George Jack Ginn, who was the president of Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, pointed out, while consumer spending seems to have been somewhat resistant to the sharp deterioration in consumer confidence, which is what we see in 2023 and 2024, I would cite several arguments for why we should see considerable moderation in consumer spending in the period ahead. And he was absolutely right. After the spending binge of recent years, debt levels have risen measurably, as highlighted in the Green Book. Now, this part, the name is redacted, which is standard practice. You don't like put people's names in the FOMC transcripts. But so some big company runs a very large consumer credit counseling service that sees 35,000 to 40,000 debt settled individuals across a wide range of incomes each year. Redacted. That seems that it seemed as if the consumer hit the wall late last year. Her organization was bombarded with very suddenly and very unexpectedly with a 23% year-over-year increase in calls for counseling sessions in December. Redacted again, she reported that the increased pace of calls had continued in January, this is 2001, and that her colleagues in, in similar businesses elsewhere in the country had a comparable experience. Now, here's the important part. When I asked her to follow up with her counselors regarding what was driving people to seek help, she reported... She reported back that it had been the combination of higher winter heating bills, higher gasoline costs, reduction in overtime pay, and the fear of job losses. Again, these are called business cycles for a reason. We see the same repeating patterns in terms of developments and developments in behavior, whether it be consumer credit, consumer confidence is something we've been talking about, all of it tied to basically labor market and incomes. Well, everybody's happy about the payroll report and the headline number, more and more we're seeing in 2023 and 2024, the same types of things that we saw in 2008 without the financial crisis, not yet, as well as in 2001. Now, Jack Ginn mentioned that the person he was referring to mentioned, among other things, price pressures, heating bills, as well as gasoline. That's a big one. The cost of necessities go up, suddenly it triggers a backlash across the consumer economy. This is something we've seen, again, repeating throughout these cycles, which is one reason why an oil price shock tends to correlate with recessions. Because in a, a weak and weakening economic climate, it's just one pressure too many. Which is one reason why, among other things, we see a rise in consumer prices overall, the CPI, which is moved in large part by oil prices, you see the CPI accelerate. At the same time, you also see an increase, an increase in consumer credit, revolving credit in particular, because as the economy weakens and slows down, as higher oil prices pressures the rest of the economy, including employers who see their profit margins begin to erode, so they start taking steps to uh, to maintain their profit margins, including weakness in the labor market, cutting back in hours, maybe hiring freezes, and all the stuff that we see today. So as consumer prices go up, the economy weakens. Consumers tend to use their credit cards until they can't. And when they can't, that's usually when you get into a recession. We see a pretty solid correlation between the annual change in revolving credit and the consumer price index. So you have a positive correlation, really... From the middle 1990s on, there's a little bit of lag with consumer credit. So prices go up and then Americans start to use their credit cards more and more as consumer prices go up. There was an acceleration in 1999 in consumer prices. Then in 2000, as we just talked about, the jump in consumer credit. And of course, more recently, you really see this, this relationship uh, pretty strongly. In 2020, prices go up first. And then in the middle of 2021, you start to see sharper rises in consumer revolving credit. Because consumers were even at the early stage beginning to use more credit to pay for higher costs. And then as costs came down but didn't come down fast enough, Americans continued to use their credit cards. So prices peaked in 2022, the middle of 2022, and revolving credit peaked a little bit afterwards. So there's more of a co-movement in them in 2023 and 2024. But the best correlation, the most solid inverse correlation, is with 
the unemployment rate because that makes the most sense. On the flip side, so as consumer prices are going up, causing more and more Americans to charge basic necessities on their credit cards, as soon as the unemployment rate starts to go up, that's a signal for, as I mentioned in the introduction, the first group of cautious consumers to start pulling back. They stop charging things because they stop buying necessities, worried about losing their job. They might even be prudent and pay down their credit card, the revolving credit card balances. At the same time, on the flip side, when the unemployment rate goes up, that's also a signal to the banking system that they might want to tighten up their lending standards even if they haven't already and do so more if they have because that cyclical indication means big trouble in terms of losses and charge-offs and everything else. So as the unemployment rate goes up, you see the rate of credit card use go down. And there's been a pretty solid inverse correlation from the very beginning, going back to the 1970s and 1980s. The SNL recession in uh, 1990, 1991 is a, almost a perfect match with credit card, uh, credit card usage. There's one exception in the data, and that's late 1995 into 1996, where credit card use had, and revolving credit had accelerated wildly in the early 90s. And then with Greenspan's rate hikes in 94 and 95, higher interest rates in the treasury market, it seems to have had an impact on consumer credit, especially revolving credit for the latter half of the 1990s which is one reason why people associate rate hikes with lower consumer credit. But then we pick it up in 2000, 2001, very good fit with the dot-com recession. As soon as the unemployment rate starts to rise, that's when you see revolving credit begin to fall. Obviously, the 2008 cycle, you got despite rate hikes, accelerating consumer credit uh, into 2007. And then once the unemployment rate begins to rise in 2007, we got to that peak in November 2007 and the weakening thereafter. So as the unemployment rate picks up in 2007, credit finally rolls over, which is exactly where we are 2023 and 2024. The unemployment rate has indeed picked up and it has picked up substantially over the last year. This last year when we've seen consumer credit, revolving credit begin to slow way down. And in the month of April, we got our first negative change in the seasonally adjusted aggregate balance, which is a recession signal. Now it needs to be confirmed with further months, but it already fits in with everything else that we've been hearing, seeing, and getting over the last several months. Remember, this is April and we're already into June here. So there's a consistency in terms of the data. There's a consistency in terms of cyclical behavior, past patterns, and everything else. Doesn't look like the establishment survey at all it looks like the household survey because there is that correlation with the unemployment rate, which comes from the household survey. As I said in the intro, what ends up happening is a couple is a combination of a couple things, a couple things that we see in every business cycle. And this is the reason why we call them business cycles because it's repeating behavior. And that is when the unemployment rate rises, the jobs market becomes questionable, Consumers start to change their behavior. Some consumers, they become prudent, they cut back on their spending, they pay down some of their balances. Others that are really struggling find out the bank no longer wants to raise their credit line and may actually want them to start, start paying down balances if they're able. So it all fits together, telling us that the economy is not strong. It does not look like the establishment survey. And at the end of the day, this remains a cycle. We've got all of the consistent cyclical behavior, including a key one here, which also tells us once again, U.S. consumers are indeed struggling and the banking system knows it. We're way past the two labor series disagreeing with one another on the state of the economy. The payroll data has done something we've never seen before. And I talked about that in the video link below. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you. Your Rhode Island University members and subscribers, check out our webinar, link in the description. And until next time, take care.